Hi, um, so uh, my name is Kim, um, I'm a PhD student in UL and I'm currently studying co-housing. So as part of my study I went to Aarhus to visit a colleague currently living in a co-housing community and this is what I'm going to be telling you about for the next couple of minutes. Um, so the community that I visited was called uh, Blahoin, um, which is just on the outskirts of the city of Aarhus. Um, the, uh, just back one for a second. Um, it was, uh, it's called Blahoin, which translated uh, means the Blue Hill, and it was called this because um, it's representative of the blue facades on most of the houses there. Um, so the development was conceived in uh, 1983 um, by an architect um, from the Schmidt Hammer Lassen Architects um, and constructed in 1985, so it was a fairly short turnaround. Um, and the host that we joined uh, visited the community a couple of, minutes, or a couple of years later. Um, so at present then the community now consists of 25 houses um, with about 60 residents. Uh, the youngest at that time of our visit was two months old and the oldest was 70. So it's truly a multi-generational community. So on our arrival then, um, a, we found the car parking area and the bin area. Um, all the residents in the community wanted the communal living space to be um, child friendly and open and free. So none of the houses have individual car parking spaces, it's all communal at the front. Um, so then one of the first things you see when you enter the community is the common house. Um, so it's a large common house um, spread over two floors. Um, all residents have access to the common house and uh, the main floor which you can see here is where the communal meals are eaten and where all of the events would take place. Um, so then in the basement of the common house, um, they'd, there'd be a few more facilities, like here we can see the, the teen room, um, the music, which is in a workshop, the laundry then as well. Um, and then when we go back upstairs, we are at the common house kitchen. Um, so this kitchen would have um, everything a regular kitchen would have, but much bigger. So industrial kind of size ovens, sinks, um, hobs, everything you'd need to cook um, for a community. Um, all residents over 12 have been actually split um, into cook four cooking teams. So um, one, one team cooks uh, every week. So generally a resident only has to cook for one week out of the month. And the, the, the cooking team is responsible for all kitchen related duties. So shopping, cooking, dishwashing, all of that. Um, and the meal preparation begins at about four on weekdays um, and weekends and the meal is eaten around six, half six. Um, so then when you move outside, um, you find a variety of recreational things like a playground, a soccer field, a fire pit. Um, the community wasn't built to res resemble a standard community, so when you turn every corner it's something different. Um, so bike sheds and clothes drying sheds are also found throughout the community. Um, the, the community is really close to the centre of Aarhus, so most uh, residents would have a bike. So bike sheds are fairly necessary in the community. And they found that the clothes drying sheds ended up being a necessity just through um, things blowing away or being taken. Um, so uh, the clothes drying sheds are just a really good idea. Um, then we come to the individual houses. Um, they range in size and type, so different uh, amount of bedrooms. Um, they all have a small kitchen and dining area and then a living area as well. Um, they do lack a couple of amenities, for example the washer and dryer, but this is intentional because the common house has a large laundry room and laundry is done fairly regularly. So then in the community itself. The, in the planning stages of the project, it was decided by the future residents that a functional private house with a larger common house was the preferred development. Um, they wanted a minimalist approach to the homes and for the common house to cater to the full needs of the community. <coughs> um, the common house can be used for events other than the communal meal, but it is regulated. Uh, for example, people from outside the community can't use the common house for an event. Um, Non-residents can, of course, attend the events, but um, they can't host them. So for example, on the day we arrived, the one of the little girls of the community was having her birthday party and her mom was hosting it. Um, so all her school friends were coming. Um, so they, they can of course attend, but um, none of like, the outside parents could use this common house for the same thing. 
Um, so generally, as a rule, um, the common house is to be used and it, as an extension of your own house. So if you wouldn't host an event in your own house, then you shouldn't use the common house in such a way. Um, within the community, then, um, members get together for activities outside of the housing estate. So things like uh, a group of ladies that go to aqua fitness and another group uh, of guys that go to soccer. Um, then the communal meals in this particular community um, happen on a daily basis, um, apart from some weeks during the summer and major holidays like Christmas. Um, the menu for the week is announced um, in advance on a Sunday, so residents can choose which meals they don't wish to attend. Um, they aren't required to attend a daily meal, um, but many do. If they don't wish to attend, they must confirm their intention on a sign-off sheet instead of a sign-on. The assumption is that everybody is going to participate, so if you don't want to participate, you do have to opt out. Um, and same as Davy said, if you, if you want to have the meal but can't make it or don't want to meet with the community at that time, it can be wrapped for you, you can take it home then later. Um, and also if you want to have guests over for the communal meal, um, you're, they're more than welcome, but you do have to sign guests up and pay, f um, pay for the guests to eat there. Um, residents pay a monthly fee to cover the meal costs as well as other communal costs. Um, so just a communal cost like maintenance. Um, if the full sum of money paid by the resident isn't used, it's refunded within about two or three months. This is because they only have one person looking after the community bookkeeping. Um, there's usually one working Saturday every month. Um, this is the day that residents would gather together and do any cleanup of the area that needs to be done and any maintenance. Um, and the residence committee manages the sale of the individual homes for the first three months of sale. Um, so the community are given uh, the community uh, committee <coughs> is given three months to sell uh, the house to the prospective resident of their choice. Um, there's a kind of a vetting process where the prospective resident comes to the communal meal. They get to chat with everybody, see if the lifestyle that the community has is something that suits them. Um, and that's the, it, they get a chance to chat with everybody. Um, so that's for three months they have that option. But if it runs out those three months, um, the, the owner of the house gets to sell it on the open market. So this co-housing community has changed over the last number of decades, but ultimately has stood the test of time. Um, and I think their shared values, spaces, meals and lives can serve as an inspiration to Ireland's future planners, developers and residents. So is this an Irish future? All of us at Collaborative Housing Limerick hope so. Thank you. Thank you very much.